You ever see some of these companies' valuation? This company's worth $220 billion. This one worth $6 billion. This one only after two years worth $680 million. Why and how? It's called the subscription economy. According to a Forbes article, it says two companies, same top line revenue, 100 million, 100 million. This one has to go chase for its revenue every single month. They got to go sell again. But this one, it's subscription. Every month, people are paying $49.99. According to this Forbes article, this one could be worth eight times more just because it's reoccurring versus this one. There's a reason for that. We're going to talk about that today. All right, so if you get value out of this video, give it a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel, but let's get right into it. On average, you and I spend $237 per month in subscription model products. That's $3,000 per year, give or take. And according to McKinsey and Company, subscription model products in the last seven years have increased 350%. But the question becomes, has this always been around since the 20s, maybe the 50s? or maybe 90s. Nope, it started in the 2000s. Let me explain to you what's happened to some of these numbers since 2000. According to a report McKinsey Company did in 2000, only 1% of companies offered a subscription service. So if you look at this, 2000 was 1%, 2005 went to 5%, 2010, 10%, 2015, 20%, 2020, 35%. It's estimated to be at 50% by 2025. Now watch, according to a report, by the conference board, the average consumer has 2.2 subscription in 2000, and look how it's gone up in 2005, 3.4, 2010, 4.3, in 2015, 5.5, then 6.7, in 2023, 10.6. That means you and I have roughly 11 different things we subscribe for on a monthly basis that helps increase the valuation of these companies. Now, you may be watching the same, but Pat, when I think about subscription, I only think about Netflix, Spotify, or Amazon. So let's take a look at this. Launch your Netflix got started in 1997, Spotify in 2008, Amazon Prime in 2005. Pricing, when they started doing their monthly subscription, Netflix is $8.99 a month. It starts at $9.99 at Spotify and $12.99 at Amazon Prime. So let's take a look at number of subscribers as of 2021. Netflix has over 200 million. Spotify has over 365 million. Obviously, that includes both free and paid. And Amazon Prime is estimated to be over 150 million. So let's take a look at revenue. In 1998, when Netflix got started, they did roughly 1.8 million. In 99 to 14.4 million. 2000, they did 49.3. 2001, they did 103 million, give or take. And by the way, today their top line revenue is 32 billion dollars. Netflix, $32 billion, worth roughly $200 billion. Let's take a look at Spotify. Spotify in 2010, revenue was $155 million. It jumped to $330 million in 2011. Last year, roughly $12.35 billion in a year, Spotify, and last but not least, Amazon. So now keep in mind, Amazon originally got started in 95, but they did not get into subscription until 2005 when they launched Amazon Prime. Look what happened to their numbers. Before Prime in 2004, they were doing 6.9 billion. In 2005, when they started Prime, they went to 14.1 billion. And do you know what they did last year? A little over $350 billion. So now if you're like me, you're like Pat, but give me a break. We're talking about Netflix, Amazon. It's not, not every industry can really do a subscription model, really. Let's take a look at other industries. Here's some industries. Software, we got Adobe Creative Cloud and Microsoft 365. Beauty, we have Birchbox and Ipsy. Fashion, we have Stitch Fix and Rent the Runway. You can literally rent the dress they're wearing, Hollywood, $3,000 dress for $100 a day. Or you can ask them to send you clothes every single month. You give them the size, your flavor, what you like, $300 a month. Every month, something's being sent your way. It's purely a subscription model. Meal kits, Blue Apron or HelloFresh. Fitness, Peloton or Beachbody On Demand. Books, Audible or Kindle. Wine, you got Wink and Bind Box. Coffee, you got Trade Coffee and Atlas Coffee. Home Goods, you got Grove Collaborative and you have Bespoke Post. Pet Supplies, you got Bark Box and Kidnip Box. Health and Wellness, you have Headspace and Calm. Personal Development, you have Masterclass and Blinkist. Language Learning, you have Rosetta Stone and Duolingo Plus. Crafts and Do It Yourself, you have Craftsy and Crafters Box. Education, you have Udemy and Coursera. And by the way, I've been in the insurance space for a long time. Why do you think these businesses are worth as much as they do? Because insurance is what? Reoccurring. Auto insurance, reoccurring. Health insurance, reoccurring. So now, what are the advantages of having a subscription model as a company? Number one, you have recurring revenue. Number two, scalability. Number three, customer retention. Number four, enhanced customer engagement. Five, improved brand image. Six, rapid growth. 
Seven, diverse industry presence. Eight, data-driven insights. Nine, flexibility and scalability. Ten, innovative pricing structure. Eleven, market disruption. Twelve, expansion into B2B space. And, and just like any other business, if you don't take care of your customers, they're going to go somewhere else, which means you're dealing with the downfall of churn. you got to keep showing up. Competition, you got to keep getting better. Compliance, you got to make sure you meet those guidelines. So now you may be watching and say, Pat, I'm not Netflix, I'm not Amazon, I'm not Spotify. What do I do about this? Look, the whole purpose of this video is to get you thinking.